don't you find that um, we, I hear people say all the time, I'm just waiting on God. I'm waiting yeah. on God. Yeah. And yet I don't see that a whole lot in the Bible. What I see is God waiting on us He's waiting to on step us. out of the boat, yeah. uh, you know? And so oh, I think Lord. if we would act more than we wait, we would yeah. actually accomplish a whole lot more for the kingdom of God. Someone is watching us, Craig, just now, and they are right at the very end of the diving board. You are, you are, you are, oh my God, do I do this or don't I do this? Do I take the plunge? Do I, do I take the step of faith? And the Holy Spirit has arranged for us to speak about this. This was not what we were going to talk about. We spent a couple of minutes before yeah. talking about the election. That was what we were... We we're both astonished at what happened in the election. And we, we weren't even going to talk about that. The scripture that the Lord gave me this morning, I was praying early this morning, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed mm. on thee. That's the scripture God gave me. And, and even that scripture ties into what we're talking about. Let me tell you something. He's going to keep you. You're, you're not keeping yourself. Yep. You are not, you're not fighting this thing by yourself he is going to keep you he's just looking for someone that will be there in the middle of the storm to say i'm the conduit through which you can meet this need so we finished building the houses we've got one more to complete and we're working on that even as we speak and there's a space of ground at vatra village and everyone's telling me take a rest take a break and i'm thinking nah we've got to, i want to start a bible school next i want to because a lot of these young folk these orphans want to be preachers and of the gospel and I, so I'm, my heart is is turning towards starting a church and beginning a bible school so we can have all of eastern europe russia's russia dominates all of eastern europe so every eastern european country all the kids speak russian so if we have a Russian Bible school in Moldova, we can take kids from Russia and East Germany, all Poland, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Albania. We can take them to a Bible school, train them, and send them back to plant churches all over Eastern Europe. Amen. I haven't talked. That's awesome. And Craig, I have never said that to anyone until I'm talking to you about it just now. And that's been in my mind and in my, in my spirit. And there's no way I can see it happening. No way it can happen. And as sure as I'm sitting here, the wheels of heaven, the whole oh Jesus, the wheels of heaven, God is setting the things up. It's out there somewhere mm -hmm. in the... Listen to me. Pastor watching me is now believing for a new church. What I'm talking about. See in heaven, the buildings we need are already built. The lights are on, the carpets laid, the, carp the chairs are in place. And all there is is outside there's a sign, hold until further notice. Mm. And when we get into the stream of heaven... Then it's released into a world and you buy a building that's being foreclosed for two million for eight hundred thousand dollars and you get the money over a weekend. All of it's ridiculous and impossible. And I don't believe a word of it unless God was in it. And that's <laughs> unless the, God yeah, was in it. Unless God was and, in it. And before that, let me say this, um, just to encourage someone, because they're not all successes. You know, that was a success no. story. Practice run. But while we were looking for a yeah, while we were looking for a building, there was another building in town. And I believed I had heard from God, right? And this was the building. And I prayed, I did the old old school Jericho march around the building, um, laying hands on the building, claiming the building, <laughs> all of that stuff. Made a, <laughs> an offer, yeah, made an offer for a million dollars, which again, I did not have, didn't have a dime, but made an offer for a million dollars because I felt like that's what God said. Um, and they responded back to my offer with, um, when you're ready to make a serious offer, let us know. So they insulted me and all of that. And so for a while, for, man, several months, I felt like I had missed God um, or that God didn't show up like he was supposed to, right? I mean, yeah. I was just, and I was in that place where, um, you know, you want to quit, but I've also learned this, you know, you say fear is paralyzing and I, I totally agree. And I've learned that courage is not the lack of fear. Courage is uh -huh. moving in the uh -huh. middle of fear. That's... Right. And so even though I was, so then you put that as the precursor on the story of God saying, go sit down and talk to the banker yeah. for the building yeah. that we did purchase. If I would have stopped in fear and said, well, you didn't do what you said last time. 
even though he probably never said that, that was all me. Sure. Um, I, I just think we need to, if you're watching and you're just going through a difficult time, you're going through a low valley, you felt like you heard God, but then God didn't show up, whatever your, whatever your dip is, whatever canyon you happen to be in, in your faith, understand that God is, God is working on your behalf. He has Absolutely. not stopped oh, Keep yeah. walking. It's solved in the journey. It's not solved in a moment. Don't give up. God is good. He has never forsaken us. What's, what's that Absolutely. verse at the very end of Habakkuk where he said, there's no olives on the trees. There's no cattle in the stalls yet. From yet this day. I will worship the Lord yeah. from yeah. this day. And he will make my feet as hinds feet to climb out of this thing. Uh, and so, man, don't quit, buddy. Uh, First Corinthians 19 says this, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's called you. You're, you're not here. And this is the, here's the confidence that I have. I'm not smart enough to do what I do. But I'm dumb enough to stay longer than anybody else. <laughs> I'm not smart. I'm not, I'm not the brightest, smartest guy in the, in the world. But I'll tell you what. I'll outweigh you. I'll be here. When I'm going to say, I'm going to... I'm stealing right? that one, Philip. I'm stealing that one. <laughs> but that's... Listen, that's, that's the truth. When, when Romania first happened, and I, I adopted Andrew, who I tease all the time, mercilessly, my son. I adopted him when he was three years of age. And uh, we went to this orphanage, and, and major ministries that, I, if I mention the name, you would know them. Everyone would know them. And they used this orphanage that, that we fixed up. We put in the toilets, we put in a new roof, painted the whole place. And they showed up with their video cameras gave one box of out-of-date medicine and raised millions of dollars for this orphanage, which was orphanage number three is what they called it. And there was not even an orphanage number three in the city. It was actually orphanage number two. And um, one night I, was, I woke up in the middle of the night and switched on the TV and, and this program was on, their TV program was on. And this little boy was, was on the TV screen and it was and, Andrew, Andrew's friend from the orphanage. And I said, this is, this is, this is when what? I adopted Andrew first. And I said, Chrissy, I woke I said, Chrissy, look, that's Marcel. How come he's on TV? And it was this TV program telling the sad, woebegone story of this orphanage. And we've come and we've painted it. And, and the room that Marcel was in was yellow. And my brother Neil and I had physically painted the room ourselves, that actual personal room. And so a whole oh, bunch of ministries. Gosh. Oh, yeah. Uh, a whole bunch of personal ministry, uh, min, uh, ministries came, took video, took photographs, and never went back. I went back and went back again. It was, it, and when it stopped being cool and the place to go and the avant-garde stylish thing for a ministry, and when trafficking became, we were there before trafficking became popular and we'll be there after p p trafficking becomes popular. But I'll tell you what I got that they didn't get. I got a son out of it called Andrew. And out of that, oh, come on. God there moved go. me to a place called Moldova. And I got a whole bunch of sons and daughters out of that. And, and they only saw it as a material thing to, to raise money. There's a difference. Listen, there's a difference between getting, having a cause to raise money for. Or, uh, uh, there's a difference between having, raising money just for a cause that you're just using to raise money for than having a real cause and needing the funds like these coats and shoes, for example. I mean, who would, uh, mm -hmm. why, why talk about, sh because that's real. That's, that's where we're living at. And, and yeah. if, if you're a pastor, friend, anyone watching, if you're going through a struggle and, and the quit button is on your desk and is flashing and the devil saying, push the button, call it off, you'll get peace. You will sell, listen to me please, this is prophetic. Don't sell your destiny for five minutes peace. Because if the devil can get you to stop over lack of money or lack of whatever, then you've given him the key of your destiny. And you've said to him, push this, open this, use this key, and you can stop me every time. If money stops me from doing what God's called me to do, then all the devil's going to do is switch off the money, and he's got me beat, and I'm going to quit. What he's learned over the years, 
when I have no money, that's when I give more. That's when I believe God for crazier things because if I'm going to fail, we might as well go down with a bang. 